We're still discussing COVID-19 and the work environment. Now, our neighbors, Ghana, recorded 1,032 fresh cases 10 days after lifting the lockdown mm -hmm. on the basis of improved testing. How prepared are we in the event that this, our ease and lockdown goes south? Util Elu has over 15 years experience in various disciplines, including customer experience, customer service, customer loyalty, customer engagement and training both in the public and private sectors across two continents. As the head of customer engagement in Nigeria for the number one insurance company in the world, Uti, ex she's extremely passionate about all things customer and um, empowering organizations and individuals to understand the right experience. Um, she will join us shortly, but we would have to continue the conversation when she's up or no. So okay. but from what Usagi was saying mm -hmm. um, about um the staff being yes. prepared right that will me thinking really it's hard like, but um, are the staff are they really prepared because what it means is that your competitors or your competitors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are in china they're in india they're in the us so, so you this have to really us the world is a global village absolutely exactly because before we say no it's a global village it's a global village but now it is we're facing the reality a global you have village. to improve your personal Skills. So whatever right. it is, the field that you have chosen, you have to be the best exactly. at mm -hmm. that job. So you have to make yourself indispensable. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not a function of, oh, uh, but I'm doing my job. Mm -mm. So there's no, there's no room for mediocrity anymore. I actually anymore. think the word exactly. is mastery. Be the master at what you do. Be so competent that you're, like you said, indispensable. Because if you, if you, if you don't take your job mm -hmm. seriously or if you're not very good at it, mm -hmm. somebody else is in, in Indonesia <laughs> or in Tanzania or in New York or in Washington. It's now, I, I, made, I did a re research, and what I discovered was this, that the, uh, according to Forbes, it says that um, we have about five changes that will happen in the workplace. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these five changes are what your company does for you, one. The other is what you work, how you work with others. That's being a team player. The other one also, that's number three now, says workplace and technology. So we know that technology has go, is going to play a major role in post-lockdown. And we also have your company and approaches. So this entails innovation, basically. And finally, your opportunities to contribute, which comes back to mastering your yourself skills. absolutely i think we have uti elu okay. on skype <laughs> uti thank you for joining us <laughs> Hello. we've thank missed you. you on ways yes <laughs> all right so uti tell us um did you, if you had listened to osage talking and the workplace mm -hmm. we know that there are genuine concerns especially you know when we read the report about ghana um isn't the lockdown and 10 days after increasing their number of active cases by 60 percent i mean that was really really scary for a lot of people so do you think it is premature for us to ease the lockdown? You know, you talking now as um, a staff of a company, are you afraid of going back to work? Okay, so am I afraid about going back to work? I'm definitely concerned um, about having to go back to work. So um, I like to put things in perspective, right? So Ghana is a good example. I mean, they're the only ones in Africa who have, have lifted the lockdown. But it's important to look at some of the, the rates. So at the time when Ghana lifted the lockdown, they had um, about 68,000 tests that had been done. And they only had 1,000 um, active cases or 1,042 active cases at the time. Um, when you juxtapose that with Nigeria, Nigeria has done about 15,000, just under 16,000 tests, right? And we are now, um, I think, at 1,800 1, was um, our count as at last night. Um, so our rate is a lot higher. Um, and that's also predominantly because of our strategy, in that we're testing people that are mostly symptomatic and their contacts. So you're already showing some sort of signs before we test. So you're likely to have... Um, be positive, giving us a higher positivity rate. Yeah. So definitely it's concerning. Um, we all know that this disease isn't a death sentence. It's a bit of an unknown in the sense that you don't know how. I mean, we know that people that have comorbidities and existing uh, 
uh, what's it called now, health conditions right. might react. But it, it's not like malaria where you know this is what you're going to get, this is what you're going to get, this is what you're going to get. So I think that's where the biggest risk lies. And that's where people will have to take decisions based on their circumstances. So not afraid, but definitely concerned. Okay. So how important is customer engagement? I understand you're, in, you're the head of the customer um, of um, head of customer engagement in your organization. So how important is customer engagement strategy during post um, well, lockdown? Well, Uti, we're not going to focus on your organization. We want to talk we're about your expertise. About do you understand? Generally, what mm -hmm. do you think the customer engagement um, should look like generally? Generally, not, on your, not in your organization. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, speaking about very general terms, uh, we've spoken or, I mean, throughout this lockdown, I've been trying to advise organizations and people to say, you know what, this is the time when your customer needs to hear from you. This is the time when your customer is also going through the same thing you're going through, the same anxiety, the same uncertainty. So certainly up until this point, I mean, customer experience is going to be the lifeblood for a lot of businesses because you essentially now have to compete for business. You have less customers because, as you said, there are millions of people who are losing their jobs and might still lose their jobs in the future. So you really need to fight for whatever share of wallets, top of mind for your customers that you're going to have. Um, and when I think about customer experience, um, I, I actually want to focus in this conversation more around employee experience because it takes employees to deliver your customer experience strategy. Now, if you don't focus on your employees because they're experiencing this anxiety, because they're experiencing all this uncertainty, your customers, it doesn't matter what your strategy is for customer they will experience. They transfer to it's your customer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I was reading a report that said that because of, of COVID, that what would eventually happen after the lockdown is that we're going to look at reduced relationship and bonding between uh, colleagues, and which will, the, the good part of it is that that will turn out to bring uh, more focus and productivity. What's your take on that? Um, so I think it's a bit sad. Um, I was listening when Osage was talking about building cubicles and people not being able to communicate as much. I mean, you spend a significant amount of your day, well, prior to, to COVID, you were spending a significant amount of your day at work and um, people were able to build friendships, you know, have relationships with people. Right, exactly. And if you're now in that environment and everybody's tense and nobody's able to communicate, you can just imagine what that will feel like, right? So yeah. I f it's a bit sad that, you know, we might lose some of that element of communication. Mm -hmm. But definitely, um, I've seen an increase in productivity um, from my team because everybody's working. I mean, I miss seeing their faces. I miss hearing their voices. But we're still very much connected um, via technology. So we talk every day, mm -hmm. whether it's via WhatsApp or, you know, all the other different digital connection options that are available. So productivity has definitely increased because if you imagine now, you don't have to contemplate going into traffic. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, your computer is right there. You start working. Um, and people have been a lot more focused. Definitely that's what we've seen during this lockdown. So oh, I expect that to continue. Okay. So Uti, um, I understand that a lot of staff, they are a bit worried because most times our organizations, we are trapped in air conditioners. And from all the medical research that we've seen online going around, we know that ventilation is very key when it comes to um, um, uh, the COVID-19 um, virus. It's, it's good to, to be in a ventilated place. You know, so do we now want to start seeing people wearing? Because I remember the the min commissioner for health mm -hmm. begging, I mean the minister for health, one of them begging that please don't resume work wearing all the full <laughs> personal protective equipment. You know that is meant for the medical um, guys to work yeah. with. They are begging that please we have limited ones, so do not go. And so, do you, how would you think it should be managed in terms of the work environment now? So should offices turn down their air conditioners and start to, you know, ventilate the place? And how would it play out? Okay, so so for me, um, air conditioning definitely is a number one concern because given the temperatures that we experience in Nigeria, the level of humidity, um, we all essentially have air conditions in our offices. Some have central central air. Some people have, you know, the various different um, air conditioning devices in their offices. So air conditioning is a huge concern. Organizations at this point will have to assess their um, the work that their, their companies do or their staff do 
to identify whether their staff are low risk, medium risk, high risk, very high risk. So for example, a health worker will be very high risk because they're in direct contact with um, you know, patients who are currently have COVID-19 or if you're not in an isolation center, you're dealing with patients every day, you don't know who might eventually present with COVID-19. We've seen those kind of scenarios happen in various hospitals. So those kind of people who are also around um, medical procedures like intubation, which can allow the path, the the virus particles to become aerolized, which essentially makes it lighter and able to travel further in air. Those kind of people, of course, we've seen PPE is required. But if you work in an office, and I mean, most organizations right now will not be opening their offices immediately to the public. So it's just maybe 50% of your staff or even 25% of your staff, you may not necessarily need to go in with PPE, but you do need to be dressed appropriately, which means that you're wearing stuff that can cover your entire body. So whether you're wearing trousers and a long sleeve shirt or so you don't want any part of your body to be exposed so that you limit uh, the amount of or the possibilities where this virus can come in contact with your skin and, and by, by uh, default into your hands and onto your face. But you definitely you... want to be mindful of your, your face mask. We've, we've talked about not touching our face mask. Yeah. We also need to be mindful of our breathing because it's very easy to actually um, hypoxia which is not getting enough oxygen whilst you're wearing those masks. Oh, so we can't not, see you again you know, because the, the headroom is disappearing as you're talking. Can you stop touching the... Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so go ahead. In terms of, of, yeah, being mindful of your breathing so that if you already are someone that maybe has asthma, in fact, if you do have pre-existing conditions that are respiratory, I would, I would not even advise that you go to work. Okay, so But basically is... having... Um, uh, so like I said, monitoring your breathing and then for air conditioning. Right now, every organization needs to be thinking about how it can cross ventilate without air conditioning. It is essential. People will have to start to open windows. We will have to cope with the heat because the research has shown, um, I'll even refer to the story in China um, of the restaurant where the, the you know nine people were infected just by sitting by the AC and that, you know, gust of airflow hmm. being able to recirculate the particles. Thankfully, it still doesn't go very far, but it's definitely something to think about considering our reliance on air conditioning. Okay, so Andrew has sent in a question. He said, um, how should monitoring be done? I work in a large organization with lots of employees in the building. How should we manage work schedules and, and, and uh, social distancing? That's from Andrew. So who is going to monitor? Is it going to be the responsibility of the company or maybe the government official? Um, so everybody is responsible. So the government has set up whistleblowers um, or whistleblower um, contacts for you to be able to report um, any kind of um, infractions. But the reality of it is it's going to be that companies will have to take the decision to have the right amount of staff present in their premises based on the amount of space giving the required social distancing rules. And then um, companies will also have to look at how their employees are interacting with one another. So if, I, if I'm to, to say that, well, com are companies responsible? Absolutely, because they need to make sure that they're keeping their employees safe. You're, you have a responsibility to manage the welfare of your employees, particularly whilst they're on your premises. So for, for starters, assessing who really needs to be in the office? As Asage said, it's not a everybody must come to work. It's not a, I know they've said 60% maximum, but it's not for you to try to hit 60%. It's for you to identify who is most critical to actually being in the office. All right, so we do have uh, an, another question. This is from Daniel from Germany, and he has um, um, a message suggestion about people going to work on Monday. He says it's better if they're going back to work on Monday. Please, they should use face masks here in Germany. You cannot go to any shop or any office or any company without a face mask. That is the only way we can prevent this disease. I think it's um, pretty much... Um, From Germany. So do you think face mask is just enough for protection? At the barest minimum, and considering that it's now illegal not to wear a face mask, the government has mandated it. So at the barest minimum, face masks, definitely, I mean, gloves as well, but gloves, you have to be very careful because mm. if you've been wearing gloves to touch everything and then you're using gloves to touch yourself as well, um, I think gloves help you to be mindful of where you put your hands. 
So if you have gloves on and then you think to yourself, actually, I'm not going to um, touch my face, or I'm not going to touch my body, but then being very careful when you take off the gloves and making sure that you wash your hands immediately. I mean, one of the other things to think about is also the fact that the window that has been given for work is quite short. So it's 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Exactly. Uh, so you're not essentially also able to run shifts. It would have been nicer or eventually, um, I would imagine that as this lockdown, as we go through the different phases of easing, even eventually when we come to a point where everybody goes back to work, I would like to see employers start to run some sort of staggered shifts or flexi hours so that even though you now have 100% of your staff, I mean, unless you're going to go and get a space that is twice as big right now, then you want to be looking at a way to stagger your, your work patterns. Absolutely. I right. think we can wrap it up there. Thank you so much, Uti. We miss you on ways <laughs> and uh -huh. we hope you're keeping safe. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so um, yeah. we have more questions. Kunle says three months payoff should be fair to allow for planning. That's referring to but what do you see um, companies exactly. three months. I don't see it. Well. A month, yes, I would agree, I, but three months, yeah. I, 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 I don't, I, see, I, that. I don't see it happening. But that's um, referring to Osage. And Ade has mm -hmm. says, what is the time estimate to see some measure of normalcy in back in the workplace? That mm -hmm. one, I it think it's, it's, it's it's it will take, take a while. It I'm looking at 2021. Then also, Ada says, See, the future I, I is tech. Lots of jobs um, would be obsolete. And I sincerely hope our workforce can, um, can upscale. Yeah. Exactly. So what do you so think? Your final you, thoughts quickly. If you are not um, um, get, getting any skill, new skill set right now, mm -hmm then you have to go back to your drawing board. Absolutely. Right. That sounds key. about you. Okay, well, I'm concerned about wearing masks. A lot of people don't understand that you can't wear these masks for so long because then you'll be recycling the same air. And if care is not taken, it's going to get you dizzy because you're no longer inhaling oxygen, you're inhaling carbon dioxide. So what you need to do is after a while, find go a outside. safe place, go outside. Open, open, air, open air, take it off for like 10 minutes or however okay. long and then breathe. Take, uh, yeah, yeah, breathe in well. Oh, and My then husband go back experienced in. that yesterday. Really? He was quite dizzy. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it now happened to me yesterday me the as well. He sent oh, me the really? research. Yeah, that, 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 that's that how that I found That there's a prolong, out. prolonged use of the, the, the mask. mask is also very unhealthy. And you don't want to do that while okay. driving. Absolutely. Oops. All right, so remember you can catch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms. Um, as we continue to hear what you are saying, it's been really insightful. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. live to hear what you have to say to us. In case you missed today's quote, here it is again. For people in business, 2020 is really just a year for staying alive. Don't even talk about your dreams or plans. Just make sure you stay alive. Then you would have made a profit already. That's from Jack Ma. Please stay safe, stay alive. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow live at 8 p.m. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>